Good morning. It's a day away from the NFL draft, or technically two or three days away from the team that apparently knows how to do it better than anybody else, the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah. Today, we are gonna pretend that the third round of the NFL draft matters, and I'm in for it. Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. I am suffering in Omaha, Nebraska. I don't like this place at all, but I gotta get paid. So in the meantime, I'm gonna talk sports while I don't get paid. Hey, it's April 27, 2022. I wanna start off by thanking the new subscriber who joined in. Thanks for getting in on the ground floor. If you like the content we've been putting out for the last couple of months, click the clack the like button. Click the clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. Because we put out a new video between 9 and 10 a.m. every single day. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And yes, comment. For I am not omnipotent. I do not know everything. This is day three of our four day NFL draft preview. On Monday, we talked about the prospects from UCLA who could go to the uh, go to the next level. Yesterday, we talked USC. Tomorrow, we'll talk about the Chargers. The reason we're not talking about the Chargers now is because there could be breaking news on the Chargers. They have a first round pick, the Rams don't. Scoreboard watching. Arizona defeated the Dodgers 5-3 yesterday. Dave Roberts is kind of upset. He thought the Dodgers gave the game away. It's one game in 162. Makes sense. It's bound to happen. Meanwhile, the LA Kings have qualified for the Stanley Cup playoffs for the first time since 2018. I'm actually very happy about this because after all, I mean, look, okay, so they're going to play Edmonton in the first round. It'll start in Edmonton. The dates are going to be decided. And for the series itself, during the regular season, Edmonton beat the Kings three out of four games. I'm just happy that this means that the Kings' drastic rebuild is ahead of schedule. That is good news. By the way, the schedule today, the Dodgers play the Diamondbacks at about 12.30 and the Kings will play Seattle at 7. I have an LA Galaxy note. Chicharito may, the door may be a little bit open for him to return to the Mexican national team. Now, for the soccer fans like me, <clears throat> Chicharito, he's the all-time leading scorer for El Tri. But for whatever reason, he and manager Tata Martino had a falling out. There have been stories about this, that, or the other. I don't know necessarily what's true. But he has, he's kept, uh, Chicharito's been snubbed over and over and over as a result. El Tree keeps having trouble scoring. They almost miss qualifying for the World Cup. And now Martino is like, yeah, maybe at some point you got to score. How you been, Cheech? I am under the impression that you can't trust a website called Fan Nation. And I wanted to tell you why. Here's a headline from that stupid website that just makes you want to puke in a bucket. Quote, Clippers favorites to land Kyrie Irving if he leaves the Nets, unquote. Did you notice the operative word, if? There is no legitimate story out there about Kyrie Irving demanding a trade, Kyrie Irving wanting to get cut. He may not be happy that the, the, the Nets got eliminated, but that, stop it. The door isn't open. And oh, by the way, this was written by the same guy, Joey Lynn. How many prominent journalists have you met named Joey? Right? How many Joeys do they have on the, on the payroll over at CNN or Fox News or the New York Times or the... I remember when Joey and Joey, when Joe, when Joe Steen broke Watergate for the Washington Post. Yeah, Joey. This Joey is the same guy who two weeks ago wrote how the Clippers were going to be the favorites to land John Wall of the Rockets, right? So according to Joey, Joey is saying, well, not only are the Clippers are going to have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, but yeah, now 
Joey thinks the Clippers are going to add Kyrie Irving and John Wall. Does that sound stupid or not? Based on what? Put down the syringe of hopium. No credibility, dude. Stop it. The Chargers have signed offensive lineman Will Clapp. He played four years for the Saints. I don't know anything else. So, let's chat the Rams. Let's go with the basics before we go deeper into the uh, into who they may or may not take. They do not uh, have a selection in the first or second round. They have the 104th overall pick. That's in the third. They also have draft choices in the fourth, fifth rounds. They have three in the sixth and two in the seventh. Eight overall. A website I do actually put some stock in, Turf Show Times, actually came out with the criteria, they, they broke down all the draft picks that Les Snead has made and said, okay, clearly this is what Les Snead values when he creates a draft board. And it's based on four, four principles. One, the first pick, you should go for the best player available. Two, t uh, lean toward offensive skill early. Okay? Three, mid to late round draft picks are for upcoming free agents. Not the current ones, but in this case, the free agents for 2023. And then in the entire class, you got 50% offense, 50% defense. So with those four criteria in mind, we start to see the strategy. So I would say, who are the free agent positions that'll be opening in 2023? Not the names, the positions. On offense, we have two backup quarterbacks, a running back, three offensive linemen, and a tight end. Meanwhile, on defense, four interior linemen, an inside linebacker, edge rusher, two safeties, cornerback, and in special teams, a punter. So you might be saying to yourself, well, James, or saying to me, James, do they really want to go for offensive skill early? This team is loaded with it. All the wide receivers, Matthew Stafford, and I'm thinking maybe they still do. Remember, they were loaded at wide receiver last year, and yet they still took 2-2 two -two at well, right? So do they really want to get caught flat-footed if Cam Akers gets hurt again? Remember, he blew out his Achilles. And then the Rams had to make a bunch of very quick trades to try to fill the hole. They traded for Sony Michelle. So do they really want to get caught flat-footed? If the Rams choose that route, if the Rams choose that route, the running back that I would think would make a lot of sense would be Rashad White of Arizona State. Because the Rams just don't need running backs to run. They need to catch the football. You have to be a receiver. And Rashad White, at that point, would possibly fill that bill. So there's that. However, what do you say they break with tradition? Slightly. What if they go defense first? After all, they've got all these holes. They will have a cornerback free agent next year because after all, they lost Darius Williams to Jacksonville in this current offseason and they'll have another opening next year. Why would it be important to add a cornerback? Well, it's because you want a traditional cornerback to free up Jalen Ramsey. See, Jalen Ramsey was a traditional cornerback in Jacksonville. When he came over to the Rams, they built a special position for him called the star. And the star, basically, he could line up to take out a tight end. He could line up as a traditional cornerback. Or he could just basically flat out blitz the uh, blitz the quarterback. The idea was to put Jalen Ramsey all over the field so you had to account for him. Does that make sense? That you had to account for him and adjust your offense accordingly and of course that puts confusion in the minds of the offense. So yeah, looking for a traditional cornerback might be the might be the way to go in the third round. So who would the Rams consider? Well, there's a variety of them. Uh, out in Nebraska, there's Cam Taylor Britt as a cornerback. They like him. People like him. He's deemed as one of those alpha male types. 
that, you know, he hits, he covers, does a lot of good things. If they don't go with that uh, guy, there's also, um, there's also Dimitri Mathis out of Pittsburgh. Why? Because he hits. He hits everything. Alante Taylor of Tennessee. He might be a terrific fit. Because the Rams play a lot of zone defense. And Taylor, uh, Taylor actually does uh, fit in a zone defense scheme a lot better. There's also Kalon Burns, or I'm sorry, Kalon Barnes of Baylor. Speed. Don't want to get caught on the deep ball. So look, they have options. Most mock drafts that I have read that seem to have some semblance of credibility have either said the Rams will take a running back in the third round and a cornerback in the fourth, or they flipped it and said, we're going to take a cornerback in the third round and a running back in the fourth. What do you think? Because I think that that actually gives us a window into the uh, into where they're looking. Now, I did take a look at ESPN's uh, mock drafts, and I did take a look at CBSSports.com's mock drafts. I'm not necessarily sure I buy, CN, uh, buy ESPN's. The reason is, is that they start off by having ESPN take a guard, Thaler Mumford of Ohio State in the third round. And then, of course, they come back with cornerback. My problem is, is that while the Rams will have openings in the offensive line next year, and is this true that they lost Andrew Whitworth to retirement, their offensive line at this moment, yeah, it's pretty set, at least in my opinion. So going back to the website that I referenced earlier, the one that I do think has some has some legitimacy to it, Turf Show Times. Turf Show Times is predicting that the Rams, in no particular order, are going to draft an interior defensive lineman, an edge defensive lineman, a running back, maybe an offensive lineman, and oddly enough, a punter. Yeah, Turf Show Times originally forecast that the Rams might punt, pardon the pun, on quarterback and take a punter. And I mentioned earlier this week that the uh, Trojans punter, there's a uh, mock draft that has the Trojans punter going to, uh, going to the Rams, Ben Griffiths. Make no predictions about that, how, however. So overall, I would say that I tend to go with the thought process that says it's either going to start off with running back and switch over to cornerback in the fourth, or start off with cornerback in the third, switch over to running back in the third. Why don't you tell me your thoughts? Because after all, I need to take a nap. I work the night shift. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, then yes, by all means, let people know and like and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Thank you for watching. I'm James. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. You have a good day, and I'm getting some sleep.